I get where you're coming from, Ryan, as far as the biggest, yep. and I and I and I and I and I accept it from the standpoint of this is big because from a, the biggest need. I think this is sure. the biggest D line commitment left from a need standpoint. I still think anytime you can land a player as elite, and this is not a, you were not pushing back on this because you and I both agree that Jason Moore is a top fifty player. It just, but this is the like you said, this is the guy that filled a need, a biggest need, and that is a guy that can play the nose and is. And we'll dive into the film here in a little bit when we when we break down. Uh, Devin's game you know we'll kind of talk about what we like and what we see and all those type of things and we'll get into that here in, in a few but yes he in this defense he's a nose I, I'll say this and I and, and I'm curious if you agree with me on this and we'll, we'll again we'll, we'll see this more when we look at the film he's a three technique in most defenses that are geared towards gap control and you know having guys that can can play that position I think he fits the nose in what Notre Dame tries to do but I don't think he's pigeonholed into the nose at all. I mean, there's there's other things he could do. But to your point, I think he's a nose first, then it can be a three. And in high school, he plays five technique. I mean, and he's got – there's a, a play where he, he does a really nice inside spin move to get to the quarterback. So I think he's a nose because he fits that – what they want out of that position, at, right. you know, size, power, penetrating ability, ability to close in a football – but he's not a nose in that he can't play something else. And I think that only adds to the value of landing a kid like Devin Houston at this point in time in this recruiting class. And I would love to give your perspective, get your perspective on this, Brian, because I know we have guys, Notre Dame has guys like Howard Cross, obviously Jacob Lacey, they can play the nose. And they're a little bit of smaller guys and they have penetration ability, obviously because of the quick mm-hmm. first step, but that penetration ability is more mm-hmm. as a run defender, right? Like I yeah. think Devin Houston with the length that he has now that's going to be able to play nose. He gives you some upside, I think, as a pass rusher from that position that doesn't usually have pass rushing ability. So I think that that's the difference and the, I don't want to call it an upgrade, but it's just going to be a different stylistic approach to playing the nose tackle position. I think Devin's going to be able to give you potential to not only impact the run game, which a nose needs to do, but also have that penetration ability and have pass rush potential too from that yeah. position. I'm smiling because I I just I like the fact that we're on the same page. I, here, here's what I wrote. I just published this literally as you were talking. Here's what I wrote in my in my in my class impact and my my commit profile. Right now, he's an even better pass rusher than a run defender. But with continued enhancement from a technical and consistency standpoint, I see Houston developing into an impact run defender at the next level as well. One making plays in the back. I actually think he, yes, you are correct. I think he right now is a better pass rusher than he is even a run defender right now, yep. which, which again, in, in the, in the run defending pass, but it, there's just some technical things as, as a junior in high school, I want to see him approve upon. And from what I understand, he's still pretty new to football. He hasn't been playing football a long time. His family moved from Canada. So, you know, there's some things to work on there, but the the natural potential is there for him to be a really good run defender. But as of right now, he's a better pass rusher. I mean, they played eight games last year. They play a, a private school league in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. They only played eight games as a team, so he played all eight games. He had 15 and a half tackles for loss. He had seven and a half sacks yeah. last year, and he plays offensive line, which we're going to watch some offensive line film as, as we go through this as well because there's – one particular game, like one of those, you know, those game highlights that they show uh, that that they'll have, like on the in, on huddle. There's one where he's playing. A, it's actually that it's a couple minute long, just a game clip highlight clip, and and you see him making a lot some some blocks to kind of show some impressive ability from him. So I, I agree with you, Ryan. That's one of the things I really like about this kid is I think he if you can we t- what do we talk about if you can rush the quarterback right up the middle. You can be really good. And now you have a nose tackle that I believe can bring pass rushing above the table. And he's 6'5. And he doesn't have the length of the other guys in the class, but it's still above average. I mean, to me, his length is still above average. And then when you put that on top of a 6'5 player, like we talk about height doesn't matter when it comes to engaging a blocker, right? It's the length that matters. Where height does matter, and this impacts Notre Dame, is when you're when you're trying to fill a pass lane. And the quarterback's throwing the ball, right? Because if my shoulders are already three inches ahead, of, if I'm six five and my shoulders are three inches ahead of yours, right? You're going to need to have more than three inches of length on me to be more impactful there. And that's yeah. where I think he adds something as well from a from a disruption standpoint. And and so again, this is a really big pickup. Let's. Stop.